Grandpa, and a lot of stuff we had just got lost, destroyed. Just you know, we were kids and didn't didn't realise the value of it. Wow. Yes, I think uh, FWB means he spent a lot of time in his, his, his other's company. Mm -hmm. I think I don't. I get the feeling that FWB was a counsellor of some sort or a, uh, a spiritual advisor or something to Menzies. Oh. Uh, many people actually. Uh, over the years I've always been interested in great preacher and great preaching and as far as Australia is concerned there is two people who are like pole stars to me. One was Dr Boreham who had his particular kind of uh, classical retelling sympathetic understanding approach to what is, most people don't realise this, but what is really gospel preaching. He was an evangelist and he wanted people to understand the gospel but in order to do that he used to sneak up on them in a sense through a story get their interest show how it could impact upon their lives and boom here's the gospel when Boreham arrived in Hobart he was 35 years old and relatively energetic but when he concluded his ministry there he was in his mid 40s tired and worn out Upon arriving at Armadale, the Borums were given an enthusiastic welcome by their eager new congregation. The Armadale Baptist Church was a luxuriously appointed church which seated 500. At Mosgill, people came out in all kinds of weather, including snow and hail, and travelled for miles by jig to hear his preaching. In Hobart, they travelled by foot and horse-drawn buggies over hill and dale to enjoy some of the best preaching happening anywhere in the world. I had long discovered the appeal of using stories to convey some external truths. As I came to know my new congregation and heard each of their stories, I realised that this might be the means of revitalising our Wednesday night meetings. The immediate result was that the following Sunday night the church was completely full. While in Hobart, I had preached over 100 sermons, texts that made history. I determined that I would preach these again at Armadale after careful revision and polishing. For nearly 14 years he'd been haunted by the words of the elderly J.T. Soundy who had said, after 40 you'll have no new ideas. But on turning 50 he again realised that some of life's most dreaded happenings are those which never occur. He was still producing five books every three years. Universities and conferences across America began inviting him to lecture and preach. He declined each offer, feeling that his work at Armadale was too important to leave. People were known to say, the preacher can write, but can the writer preach? The time was very critical when he came there. The war had got into a very crucial stage. By now, Australia was greatly under threat. And this was the situation that Dr. Borum came into, where as a congregation, we needed someone who would give us a sense of a sureness of touch in the midst of so much that was uncertain. GIA Global Interaction. It, this used to be called the Australian Baptist Missionary Society Headquarters and it's really fitting that we come here because F.W. Borum had a great commitment to overseas mission. Borum felt deeply for India. He considered it one of the last great frontiers to be touched by the gospel. He felt that India was going to have an increasingly important role in how the world well, would be shaped. By the impact that Christ has made upon India in so few years, so short a span of years. 
Think of the antiquity of India when you think of the one year and the one year's work. India is India the ancient. Other countries are old, Greece is old, and Rome is old, but Greece and Rome are nothing to India.